put up a picture of progressive hair loss. Now, in this case, this was gluten-induced autoimmune disease creating alopecia areata. And what you'll see is that it's, it's almost like patch-like. And the hair loss is very, very smooth. There aren't little tiny hair fibers growing out. It's completely, the hair loss is completely uh, stopped in certain areas. Now, what you're going to see in that particular picture that I've got up is you're going to see a... a um, a hair loss in one picture and then you're going to see a few months after gluten-free diet and several months more after gluten-free diet. So what you're seeing here is the progressive improvement in this person's autoimmune condition as a result of diet change. And I want to emphasize that because this is the real deal, folks. If you have gluten sensitivity and you're suffering with any type of autoimmune hair loss, again, whether it's somebody mentioned in the feed autoimmune universalis, which is total body hair loss, um, this is autoimmune and it can be stopped. I've seen it be stopped and I've seen in many cases I've seen it be reversed if you get to it early enough. Now if you're you know, in your late 60s or 70s and you've had this and you're now you're bald as a result of that happening, then you're probably not going to get regrowth of the hair. But I have seen some people even at that age start to get little hairs regrowing after changing diets. So it's important to understand the power of diet as it relates to hair loss. Nothing, in my opinion, is more powerful than diet change. It doesn't matter whether you're getting the thinning aspect of hair loss or whether you're getting the autoimmune aspect of hair loss. Now, some people say, well, what about androgen-related hair loss? Um, that has to do with biochemistry and nutrition. So that, to me, has more to do with the nutrition part than it does to actually, to actually has to do with a, a true hormone imbalance. It's nutrition imbalances that lead to hormone imbalances. But again, in those pictures, I want you to see what it kind of looks like so you can get a good idea. Now, I have another picture, and this is the most recent one, where we have complete hair regrowth. And I don't know if we can get that up on the screen, Alan, if you've got that other picture up. But this is the same person... Um, this is this is over a year after those other pictures, and what you see is a full head of hair with no hair loss whatsoever, no autoimmune hair loss, no patchiness, um, nothing. Hair is normal; it's nice and thick, and that's what we're looking for ideally um, by changing that diet. And again, in that case here, this in this case study, that was gluten. So gluten induced autoimmune alopecia. Um, and a, a recovery completely within less than two years as a result of simply removing gluten from the diet. So that's the power, again, of diet change. So let's go back now to some of these nutrients. We've got, again, vitamin D, I said protein, we mentioned biotin. Several others, we've got zinc, we've got copper, we've got vitamin C, all as nutrients that are necessary for the health of hair and for the strength of hair because sometimes hair thinning occurs not because it's not regrowing it's just regrowing very weakly and so the brushing of the hair pulls out the hair that's regrowing because the hair is not forming strong understand that hair is collagen and collagen is a protein but if we look at hair under a microscope it's a triple helix you know if you, you know if any of you have ever studied biology you recall a double helix is what your dna is it's but your, your collagen is a triple helix, meaning it's three lines. So if we look at this microscopically, it's, it's three, think of it as like three small ropes that wrap around each other to form a bigger, stronger, more elastic rope. If you've ever been on a boat and seen those really, really big ropes, and it's not just one rope, it's multiple strands connected and intertwined around it. And that's what your collagen looks like. So forgive my drawing for not being super duper accurate, but I want to give you kind of a rudimentary rough sketch of collagen. Now in between those different strands we have what are called collagen crosslinks. So again it looks a little bit like DNA only instead of being a double helix it's a triple helix. And these crosslinks are what give collagen its elasticity, its strength, and its resiliency. So this is what makes it stretchy, this is what makes it durable, this is what binds it together. And what happens with copper and vitamin C and zinc deficiency is these cross links don't form very well and so the hair is more likely to break it's more fragile it doesn't hold up as well it doesn't grow as long it doesn't withstand the comb or the brush and so it tends to fall out because it's being broken as you're brushing so these deficiencies zinc copper and vitamin c particularly will cause your hair to become a lot more fragile now certainly there are other things that can cause your hair to become more fragile overexposure to heat um, if you you know if you if you hair dry your hair every day and use one of those flat irons and you put your put a lot of heat to your hair you're going to damage the hair itself and I'm not talking about that as a cause of hair loss 
I'm talking more specifically about nutritional deficit as a cause of hair loss. So zinc, copper, vitamin C deficits will really make your hair follicle, or not your follicle, but the body of your hair, the collagen, the elasticity of your hair. Uh, it will compromise it and it will make hair loss a lot easier to happen. So again, these are things that can be tested for. Biotin, zinc, copper, vitamin C, all these things can be tested for. You just have to ask your doctor to run the appropriate testing to get the information so that if you need to supplement with these things that you can supplement with these things. Now, I mentioned before that Hashimoto's, I said autoimmune hypothyroid could cause the thinning or the lack of regrowth, but there are a couple of other things that can happen nutritionally that are indirectly related to hair loss that I want to bring up today. So think of these things as directly linked to hair loss, meaning a deficiency of these will cause your hair to thin and cause your hair not to grow as well. But there are deficiencies that can cause your thyroid not to work, and so when your thyroid doesn't work, you have hair loss, and so it's indirectly. Again, not directly, but indirectly. So for example, iodine is necessary for your thyroid to properly work, and if you don't have enough iodine, you can develop hypothyroidism, vitamin B2 can do this. Iron deficiency can do this. So can selenium deficiency. So can vitamin A deficiency. So we got several different nutrients that can effectively um, minimize the way your thyroid is supposed to work nutritionally. And I've, we've got a really great uh, series on the nutrients revolving around proper thyroid function. What I would encourage you to do, because I'm not going to go into the full spectrum of this tonight, is go over to glutenfreesociety.org. If you're not already subscribed, first of all, sign up for our gluten-free survival kit. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. We'll send you tons of wonderful information to help you. But two, in the search box, type in gluten and thyroid disease, and you're going to pull up uh, a pretty detailed article with graphics and images on the nutritional relationship around your thyroid and really get educated because again knowledge is power and if you have a history of hypothyroid but you've never been told why you have it and nobody's ever checked you for these things and you've just been put on medication it's time to go back and start looking at these things because these things could very well indirectly cause your lack of hair regrowth so very very important at you we think about not only the direct causes, but we think about the potential for indirect causes. And the reason I, I bring up, there are other diseases with indirect causes and associations and relationships, but the reason why I bring up hypothyroidism is because it's, it's largely the number one condition, especially in females today. I think it's at last, at last check, I think it was either the top one or two prescribed medication in the United States. So lots and lots of women struggling with hypothyroidism. And, and lots of those women have not had this looked at, have not had that looked at. And so very, very important that, uh, that you have that opportunity to understand that so that you can move forward in a confident way. Hey, and if you missed the earlier part of this series, click right here so you can go back and get caught up. The information there might be critical to helping you on your path to better health. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe for updates below. Have a great day.